السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. First and foremost, um, I would like to congratulate the um, the days of Rajab and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept our ta'at and ibadat, insha'Allah. And also, also um, offer my condolences for the um, martyrdom anniversary of. Imam Al Hadi Ali Salat was salam first of all to him of our time and second of all to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Um, it is my honor to be here again after a long time in this beautiful masjid. And uh, and Alhamdulillah we are honored to have Sayyidina Ajaya Razavian. May Allah inshallah bless him and his family and all of you, inshallah. Please recite the salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So inshallah we recite some of the um, verses of Surah Al-Insan inshallah. <coughs> A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم
عيني يشرم بذا عباد الله إن Oh, <laughs> 
بليز ريسايد لا سلوات فور هيز هيلث اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه احسنت ما شاء الله ما شاء الله so this was an honor to have him tonight here and as you saw or heard beautifully you know the sight of all oh, inshallah well uh, without any delay uh, we're going to have uh, Ayra Zavian left Ayra <laughs> Zavian come back please <laughs> so before before he comes uh, there was a there was a prayer that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you recite that three times in the morning and three times in, at night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect you and give you like a uh, cover, protection cover for you. And if you remember uh, one of the clips, uh, Sardar Soleimani, God bless his soul, uh, mentioned that, that they call it Allahumma ja'ani fi derika al hasina allati tajalu fi haman turid. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you like he's protecting the best. Uh, so, and before and after that, you say salawat. So please. Please now recite la salawat. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa Without any delay, we uh, ask uh, Brother Hudatul Islam Azavian, please come forward and give us uh, his speech and inshallah at the end of it you can have a question if you want. Please listen to us salawat for all the ulama especially Hajar Razavian. Allah الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على عدائهم إلى قيوم يوم الدين I send my condolences for the martyrdom of Imam Hadi alayhi salam, our 10th Imam that was martyred very madloom. And today we're going to be speaking, tonight we're going to be speaking about the life and legacy of Imam Hadi alayhi salam. Because it is very important for us to remember the Imams. A lot of times the martyrdom passes away and we completely forget about that Imam. And we shouldn't be like that. Because we have been created from the excess dirt of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam as we have in tradition. So therefore, their husn and their grief should be our grief. And their farah and joy should be our farah. Also, we'd like to dedicate this majlis to the passing away of a grand Ayatollah al Udma Safi Gul Payagani, a great scholar that lived in Qum and lived about 103 years of age, 102, 103. Very pious scholar, inshallah, we will dedicate this, inshallah, the recitation of the Quran for him, and that he was buried also in the city of Karbala, in the shrine of Imam Hussein. They took him from Iran, from Qom, and he was buried in the shrine of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, after years of khidma, after years of being a servant of Ahlul Bayt. When they came to him, this ulam, the uh, Bazaris, you could say, or the merchants of Tehran, they said that we want a scholar. When they, from the Tehranis, they came to Ayatollah Buru Jerdi, 
He said, give us a scholar. And at that time, Ayatollah Safi, his monetary situation wasn't very good. He was struggling in Qum. So he came to his teacher, Ayatollah Buru Jardi, and he asked him you know, about this offer they're giving for him to go to Tehran and to be a scholar in Tehran. And Ayatollah Buru Jardi was shocked. He looked at him like this because he said to him, we are looking forward. We are... We have hope in the Hosea, in the future Hosea, in the seminary because of you. When was this? Ayatollah Buru Jardi lived maybe 50, 60 years ago. That at that time he saw Ayatollah Safi and said that we won't allow you to go to Tehran. You need to stay here. We have hope in the future of the Hosea because of you. So his entire life he did khutbah for Ahlul Bayt. And it is the you know will of God that he's buried in the shrine of Imam Hussein. And inshallah, we'll talk more about his life, inshallah, tonight. When you look at Imam Hadi's life, and you see that 34 years of Imamah, about 20 years he was in Samir Ra. Anybody here had tawfiq of visiting Samir Ra here? I know one of the brothers, alhamdulillah, they went to Samir Ra recently from here. And, uh, well, I'm not sure, actually, I think they went to Karbala, they missed the, the, the Samir Ra part, but it's okay, they had the intention, so inshallah it's written. But yes, Samarra was a capital of the Abbasids. The powerful Abbasids and brutal Abbasids they had for maybe 70 years. You know, a lot of times their capital was Baghdad. But they had changed it to Samarra. And there they wanted Imam Hadi, they forced him to go to Samarra to be under observation. And now we're going to, at the end, talk about, so listen, We'll talk about what exactly happened that Mutawakkil Abbasi, he brought Imam Hadi to somewhere. The exact story we'll tell you, inshallah. So Imam Hadi alayhi salam is in Medina. And when he, from his life, we have two very important things besides all the hadith, but those the heritage, the Shia heritage that we have. One is Al-Ziyarat Al-Jami'a al kabir an encyclopedia of imamat is attributed to Imam Hadi. Has anybody here re read some of this ziyarat before? I'm sure you have. If not, please look at it. As look at it as not just reading it. Look at it as a book, like you're studying it. The other, maybe fewer have read, is Imam Hadi's ziyarat of Imam Ali. And when he came to Iraq, the first year he went and visited Imam Ali alayhi salam shrine. And it happened to be on the day of Ghadir. It happened to be on Ghadir. And he has the ziyarat of Imam Ali on day of Ghadir. Again, another ziyarat, but like a book for us. If you read it and study it, it's like, I'm going to give you two lines. Ziyarat Jama'a, usually Thursday nights, those that come here, once in a while I do tafsir of Ziyarat Jama'a al-Kabir. But because of this lines that he, what he talks about Imam Ali, uh, from Imam Hadi's words. He comes and says, Salam to Imam Ali. Assalamu alayka ya deen Allah al -qawim. He calls Imam Ali deen Allah. Usually when he calls somebody, you say he's mutadayin, he's religious. He's a religious, he's pious. But here he says, peace be upon you, O true religion of God. That Ali, you are deen Allah. You are the religion of Allah. Why? Because it was his, his command that Rasulullah completed religion with, with the wasiyat of Imam Ali alayhi salam, that religion is complete. So therefore, when you see al-insan al-kamil, the perfect human being, from Rasulullah to Imam Ali to Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, when you see them, they are deenullah. They, they are the embodiment. You see this in statements, for example, when Shahid Sad, Muhammad Baqir Sad calls, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, al-Islam kullu. He is all of Islam. So when they martyred Imam Hussein alayhi salam, they had martyred Islam, the representative of Islam, the embodiment of Islam. The Islam that the Quran that is not there, the Quran that is speaking. And then Imam Hadi calls Imam Ali alayhi salam, wa saratuhul mustaqim. That he is sarat al-mustaqim. Ali alayhi salam is the straight path of Allah. How many times in salat do you say, Ihdina salat al-mustaqim? Guide us towards the right path. 
according to this, you're saying, guide me to be like Ali Guide me to be like Imam Ali. Remember, when we praise Imam Ali, we say he's Deenullah, he's Sirat al Mustaqim. We're also praising Rasulullah because he, that is the teacher. When you praise the student, you're praising the teacher as well. So there you see beautifully what he does, what hikmah, and he preserves for us uh, this tr tradition of ziyarat of Qadim. In ziyarat al Jami al Kabira, you have a few lines that we're going to, inshallah, do tafsir of the life of Imam Hadi alayhi salam and learn lessons from these statements in al ziyarat al Jami that's mansub for Imam Hadi alayhi salam. One is this in the ziyarat, you've maybe heard of this, kalamukum nur. Your speech is light, Ahlul Bayt. When you speak, your speech is light. A lot of times when we sp speak, we, we don't know. It might be darkness. We don't know. But the speech of Ahlul Bayt is light. When it's light, it goes into your heart. Because that comes from a holy person. It comes from a person that has acted upon his Islam. Kalamukum nur. I'm going to give one hadith from Imam Mahdi alayhi salam that you can understand that the kalam of Imam Hadi, the speech of Imam Hadi is light. Ad-dunya suqun, rabiha fiha qawmun, wa khasira akharun. The world is like a market in which some profited and others lost. The world is a marketplace. Today we see huge centers of trading and business, for example, you see stock exchanges, and every day you see there's loss and gain. And someone comes out of there, rich billionaire, trillionaire, someone comes out of there, he loses everything. In this example, the dunya is a suq for you. The dunya is a marketplace. Some gain, they gave their life, they gave that capital that they had. And what do they gain instead? God's satisfaction, they get maqam. Some, some like Ayatollah Safi. Allah gave him life, and he went after knowledge. He went after Ahl al-Bayt. He went after Qala al-Sadiq, Qala al baqir his entire life. He went and compiled the hadith of Imam Mahdi, 800, 900, 700 hadith in Muntakhab al-Athar. He collected, it's translated in English, the, the hadith from Imam Mahdi. And whenever he spoke, he spoke of people always about Imam Mahdi. May Imam Mahdi be satisfied with you. And he would always do dua. So some, they gave what they had, that life that they gave, to be a servant of Ahl al-Bayt. And Ahl al-Bayt honored them. And Imam Hussein Alaihissalam brought him in his shrine and allowed him to be buried next to him. And there are others that they have this capital. Imagine they give you a lot of money. They give you, for example, Macy's cards, a lot of Macy's cards to go to Macy's. And at the end, you drop them all. You don't have any gift cards and you lose your entire money that you had. Some come to this world with this capital that we have. And this is the greatest gift that Allah has given us is the time that we have, our umr, our life. And at the end, he dies. You look at him. What did you do? What did you accomplish in this 50 years, 70 years? What did you do? Did you recognize Allah? Do you know God now? Did you worship God? Did you gain kamal? Did you gain perfection? What did you do to yourself? And that is a disaster. So some in this world, they come. It's a suq right now. It's ticking. The stock market is open for us right now, right now. And every, not only every year, every minute of it, every day, you can ask yourself, did I gain anything or not? This day I ask you right now, myself, what did I do? Right now, this 24 hours I had, I had a chance, right? I had capital. What did I tra trade it for today? What did I do? Did I waste it? Did I go into the marketplace with a lot of money? Oh, and I lost all my capital? What happened? We have in tradition those that they're saying day is equivalent, two days are equivalent, they are maghboon, they are at loss. But then there's worse than this, inshallah, it's not for us, that those that go with this capital that Allah has given, and they purchase something, but they don't purchase God's pleasure, they don't purchase heaven, they purchase the hellfire. They purchase fire with this capital. Imagine somebody that goes to the marketplace and purchases poison for himself. That is the reality. That they go and they not only lose this, but they purchase Allah's wrath. 
So therefore, we see a person who's second, who's, who's going down, his, uh, his next day is worse than before, then he is mal'oon, then he is cursed. So these hadith make us realize this very important reality that time is click, kick, uh, clicking for us and that we are at loss or we are winning. And you can imagine that every day, imagine that every minute, even one minute. Of course, this is not from because of me. This is a majlis of knowledge, of hadith, of Imam Hadi. So therefore, coming to the center, coming to the mosque is one of the best things. This is a place of the remembrance of God. So you have given, you know, that hour that Allah had given you, you have given it for Allah. And that's how come you feel good when you come out of the mosque. Because you made a good business transaction. You have gained. Don't you feel good, for example, when you get a good deal? You get buy one, get one free, you feel great. You get one pizza, and I don't know, the other one comes free. I don't, subhanAllah, I didn't know. I feel very good today. But when you come to the masjid, you come to the center, you read Ziyad Ashura, you read Quran, you see your brothers, you give, your, you give something, you give your time, but instead of you, got, you give a treasure. You give a place that, you know, in the shrines of Ahlul Bayt, Sheikh Baha'i was, uh, had this poetry mentioning when one of the uh, kings was lighting the candle. Back then there were candles of the shrine of Imam Rada. One of the kings was cutting the, you know, the candle. It has uh, that string that you set on fire. And he was cutting it. And Sheikh Bai has poetry that be careful when you're cutting, king, that you don't clip the wing of the angels when you're, when you're cutting, as you know, to realize when you have special places, religious places, re gatherings of knowledge. Our teacher would always say when you're, it's a gathering of knowledge, he said, look under you. Do you see how soft it is? A little bit more softer. He says, this is the wi wing of the angels. Because Allah wants us to gain spiritual, Quranic, hadith knowledge. So this is one hadith, not because it's from me, it's because it's from Imam Hadi. Ad-dunya suq. Rabiha fiha qawmun. Wa khasira akharun. This world is like a market in which some profited and others lost. And you see in the hereafter, an-nas fi dunya Today we want al amwal. We want yachts and ships and planes and cars and buildings. And uh, after that, we want cities. You want, you know, you never get satisfied. It's like salt water. You want more and more and more. You want al amwal. But that same thirst will be different. That same thirst instead of al amwal will be al amal. You want. Salat, Salat Layl, recitation of Quran, doing good to my parents, going to Hajj, uh, you know, fulfilling my duties. You want that, and said you'll be thirsty for that. So this is the first advice when you say Kalamukum Nur, because the Imams put these things into place for us. They're the remembrance; they remind us of Allah. So remember, first note, brothers and sisters, our life is precious. If you want to trade your life for something, trade it for something that's valuable. Two, we see from here, for example, Amrukum Rushd. Rushd, when you say in Farsi, usually, people think it means, you know, to, to grow. But Rushd in Arabic means guidance. You can say it's a word like guidance. Amrukum Rushd. Your command was Rushd, is guidance. Imam Hadi had very great companions, disciples, people that he trained. Some of them became the deputies of Imam Zaman later on. Like Uthman ibn Sa'id al-Amri was the first deputy of Imam Mahdi during the minor occultation, was a representative of Imam Hadi, Imam Askar or something, then Imam Mahdi. Or you see Shah Abdul Azim, you visited him in Tehran, many of you. A student, a disciple of Imam Hadi, and he sends him, and he's in Ray. And you see what a great representative he is and what a position Shah Abdul Azim has in Tehran. One of them is Ibn Sakit. Ibn Sakit, Sakit in Arabic, you know, we say sukut, it comes from silence. His father was, was silent. And that's one of the actions when someone's quiet, because they're silent. So someone that is wise, they're silent. Ibn Sakit, his father did not talk much, so he became the son of the person that didn't talk much. He was, when you when it comes to grammar, lexigraphy, when it comes to being a scholar, he was a great scholar, Ibn Sakit. And he wanted his, sometimes he would teach the sons of Mutawakkil. 
One day, this student of Imam Hadi were explaining how Amrukum rushed your command. He says to him this question to Ibn Sakit. Look at who he has you know, raised. He says, are my two sons more valuable or are Hassan and Hussein more valuable? Ibn Mutawakkil, he destroyed the shrine of Imam Hussein maybe seven times. How would you answer this question if I ask it right now? How would you use Imam Hassan? And he is a brutal tyrant, a murderer. In front of him, if he says something, usually we say do taqiyya, right? You know, don't 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 say it. You know, okay, you know, leave me alone. Your sons are great, mashallah. They're handsome, mashallah. Leave me alone. Let me go back to my family. Amrukum rushed. Your command is guidance. Ibn Sakid said, not only is, of course, Imam Hassan and Hussein, you can't even compare them to your son. He said Qamba. The slave of Imam Ali is better than your two sons. The slave of Ali is better than your two sons. He got so upset, he made a hole in the back of his neck and took, had his neck, had his tongue pulled from the back of his neck. And that is the great scholar Ibn Sakit. And that is the com you know, companion of Imam Hadi Ali Salam, that they had so, such cur courage, so fearless in front of tyrants. That he says, Gambar is better than your two sons. Question, what about taqiyya? What of the simulation? They know, these students of Imam Hadi, they know when to do it. When Maytham at Tamar also speaks like this and becomes martyred in the same way, he knows when to do taqiyya, when not to do taqiyya. They know when such greats stood up and gave their life for Ahlul Bayt, this was a sense of strengthening the maktab of Ahlul Bayt. This was not a position of doing taqiyya anymore. They decided that I hear, I have to stand up to mutawakkil. I have to allow that me, Ibn Sakit, the great uh, grammarian, the great scholar, I'm going to stand up against him, written that, you know, I will die for Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salam. Again, he gave his life for Ali alayhi salam. How do you think Ali alayhi salam will treat him in the day of judgment? When you do something small for Ahlul Bayt, you see multiple the reward. What about getting, you know, your tongue for Ali Ali Salam? He'll come to you. He'll come to you, and the hadith has, you know, and Ali Alladi Kunta Tuhibbu. I'm that Ali Ali Salam that you used to love. He comes. One of the first people that come right when death happens. Ali Ali Salam comes for us. You know, one of the companions of Ali said, I wish that I died a thousand times so that I could see Ali, Ali Salam a thousand times. So then we see the life of Imam Hadi, Ali Salam, Karamukum Rushd. We had, and then we had, Amrukum Rushd, Karamukum Noor, Wa Wasiyyatuhum at Taqwa. In your Wasiyya is Taqwa. In your commands, you can say, your advice that you give. Your advice is taqwa. One of the advices that Imam Hadi had is the time when they're dishonoring Karbala, dishonoring the shrine of Imam Hussein. He was sick. And he asks one person, you see in these books, go to the shrine, go to Ha'ir. Go there and do make dua for me. Ha'ir is that place where Imam Hussein is buried, that specific place. Some say it's because of when they tried to flood the shrine of Imam Hussein, the water came, but it didn't enter that exact area. It was when it allowed to be destroyed. The water to be, to be to fill it up. So he had somebody else. He said, go ahead, take this person. Have him make dua for me that I will get, uh, uh, you know, get shafa from the shrine of Imam Hussein. That person was saying, wait a minute. This is Imam and Ma'asum. This is an infallible Imam. Imam Hussein is an infallible Imam. How come he wants Shafa from through a, a normal person to make dua for him in, in the shrine of Imam Hussein? And there he answers Imam Hadi alayhi salam. And he answers and he says that Allah has some places that he likes to be worshipped in. And Al Ha'ir of Imam Hussein is one of those places. Allah loves those places to, for him to be worshipped. And he wanted his shafa to come from the shrine of Imam Hussein, even though he's infallible Imam. So you see, and this is a great example of a wasiyyat kum at taqwa. Your wasiyyat is God consciousness. Fi'lakum khair Imam Hadi alayhi salam. That your, fi your actions are good. 
so much so that in books of history it mentioned that they found some of the royal money in his home once. Royal money. And they asked, and they found out that Motawakkil was sick and that his money, his mother, made nadr to Imam Hadi because they understood the spirituality they had. They understood the position they had. And that the mother of Motawakkil made nadr and gave it to, to Imam Hadi. Even the mother of Motawakkil had belief in Imam Hadi, alayhi salam. Adatukum al-ihsan wa sajiyatukum al-karam. Your habits are compassion, and your nature is generosity, Ahlul Bayt. Your habits are compassion. When Imam Hadi is in Medina, there's a scholar by the name of Buhaira. And Buhaira Abbasi led prayers in Medina. And he gets a little jealous of Imam Hadi. Remember, the Imams are so great that there's two paths to the Imam, like Imam Ali. Either you do submission, you do taslim to them, or you resist them, you get arrogant, and you get jealous, and you can't, and you have to fight against them. So they kept telling him, imagine, he's trying to do his khutbahs, he's trying to lead prayers in Medina, and there's Imam Hadi, and everyone loves him. Everyone goes to him. Nobody's, for example, there's real, you know, p pious people are not uh, trusting as much as, you know, that Imam. So he gets jealous, and he says, you know what, I'm going to write a letter, I'm going to tell Mutawakkil about this you know, Hadi, salam, this Ali ibn Muhammad. I'm going to tell him. And he possibly makes things up about Hadi. Salam. He makes him as a threat. So Mutawakkil comes and listens and sends somebody and says, okay, it's time. You have to now go to Samir Ra. And obviously he's not going to take him in the good areas of Samir. It's going to take him in the military zone in Samir Ra. So this Buhaira is walking Imam Hadi salam in the hadith or in the history. It says that he gives three days. He says, allow me three days. Do you know how hard it is to be exiled from your hometown? Do you know how hard it is to never ever come back? To not see your family anymore? To, to never set place in where all your family, your friends, and where you're raised? To go to somewhere completely estranged from you? This is terrible. This is what they told us right now. You can never ever come back to your hometown where all your friends and family are. You can never ever come here. How upset would we be? In this type of uh, visit, would never Imam Hadi would never come back. So Buhaira did a huge dhulm and oppression to Imam Hadi. And he comes to him face to face. He comes to him, not only that, he's proud, he's arrogant. He comes to him and mentions he's writing with him and says to him that uh, I swear he tells him on the road Buhaira told the Imam I know that you understand that I was who was behind your exile to Iraq I know you know it was me yeah, I, I sold you out I sold you out I swear that if you complain to me to Motowakin now if you go to Motowakin and complain and say that th this was all false accusations I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to cut your palm trees, kill your friends, and have your stream and channels and lands destroyed. And for sure, I'll, s I'll do what I'm done. I'll say what I'm doing. So what is Imam Hadi? He says, turns to Buhaira and says, Indeed, I will complain from you to God. When I complain from you to God, I never complain to anyone apart from him. I'm just going to to complain to God. I'm not going to complain to Mutawakkil. Who's Mutawakkil? You think the Ahlul Bayt took their problems to Mutawakkil? No. I'm not going to tell Mutawakkil. I'm going to tell, tell God. Once he said that, I'm going to complain to God about this dhulm that you did to me, he got shocked. He got shocked and he got upset and said he prostrated to the feet of the Imam in lamentation. He got upset and he says he shed tears because they knew who the imam is and asked for forgiveness. He says, will you forgive me? He still is it's not stopping it. He's just saying, you know, go, would you forgive me? You know, he didn't say, okay, I'll, I'll fix it or whatever. He says, forgive me. The imam says this, and this is the key for us, brothers, sisters. Sometimes you have fights with spouses, you have family members over the smallest thing. For example, someone wants 
vegetarian pizza, someone wants cheese pizza, and they fight. Something like the smallest thing, and they fight over it. Or the, you know, sometimes something silly. I or I wanted a round table, you got a square table for that. Something, you know, silly. And they never forgive each other. The fight keeps going and going. Sometimes even worse, children to their parents. Their dad that raised them, when you forget you're, you're so small and young and so dependent, and you forget that, what did dad do for you? What did mom do for you? And you make the smallest amount of things, some little amount of something you think disrespect, you never forgive them. Imam Hadi is exiled, is still leaving to Sam Ra to face Mutawakkil. And a person says, cries, you know, and says, forgive me. He says, Afawt, I forgive you. I forgive you. This is the forgiveness of Imam Hadi. This is the karam of Imam Hadi. You are the Shia of Imam Hadi. What do you think if you ask him to ask Allah for you, that may Allah forgive us our sins? Will not Allah, you know, can you beseech us in the behalf? Will he not help you in the day of judgment with Allah's permission? So this is the forgiveness of Imam Hadi salam with his enemies, how he treated his enemies. Imagine how he's going to treat his friends. This is why their shrines today, so many people come today. So many people come. This is why so many people to defend Imam Hadi's shrine. You know, Imam Hadi and Imam Asan Asghari's shrine was in danger. Big danger from ISIS. They were inside Samarra. And it was the Shia, the lovers of the shrines, that came in no matter what it was, to immediately come and protect the shrines. And today, alhamdulillah, from this love, ISIS is, is gone, basically. But those minarets, those shrines that were in danger are safer than ever before. Alhamdulillah. Why? Because of that person that is inside that shrine, that holy body that is inside that shrine, that person that forgave went to somebody that did the biggest loan to him. So this is the life, a little bit of the life of Imam Hadi alayhi salam. And one thing I'll mention about Ayatollah Safi Gol Pargani before uh, we would do some rosa for Imam Hadi alayhi salam. One of my friends, I studied with him. I was asking him today in Um, we have a mubahitha. He said, you know, give me, you have any stories from Ayatollah Safi? He says, yeah, one time I met him. And he's talking about Iran, just how religious Ayatollah Safi was. He says that he was so upset with sinning that's happening. He lives in Qom, with sin that's happening, not in America, not in Europe, in the holy city of Qom. He said he would see sins, and he said he was so upset a few years ago. He says that, may Allah bring my death to me. I cannot bear this anymore. I cannot bear, bear this, these sins anymore. Because you know, life, things have changed a lot in modern life. Things were much more uh, pious, maybe, you know. And people that those sins, we're looking at new sins that didn't exist, you know. And when new sins exist, new bala comes. So that is the life of Ayyad al-Maraj al Ayatollah Safi said, I wish I would die from, 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 from watching you know, this, this sin and corruption and how sensitive he was for, for sin. Us, unfortunately, we become friends with anybody. They, now the billah, if they drink or not, doesn't matter. If they pray or they do salat or not, doesn't matter. If they go to clubs or not, doesn't matter. Just be my friend. So a lot of times, you know, our friends choose us. We don't choose our friends. But how sensitive he was to sin. That he says, Allah, take my life away. And I ask him, was he serious or was he just saying? He says, he was serious. He was serious. I can't bear to watch these sins anymore. But for us, we're surrounded by it so much, it becomes normal, unfortunately. Imam Hadi, alayhi salam, can dim the lights. There has two comparisons to Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. Two ways that we can compare Imam Hadi to Imam Hussein. One is that when Imam Hadi salam came to Samarra, he was taken, what you could say, in the kharabe, in the ruined parts of Samarra. The areas of destruction and ruin, which is not the shan and position of the Imam. Mutawakkil, yes, you invited him, you forcefully, you brought him to 
some at Radha Capital, but why do you have to put them in a wasteland? The children of Imam Hussein in the camp of Imam Hussein, the same way when they came to Syria, when they came to Sham, they went to the Kharabe. They went to a ruined part. They went to a part that sun in some of the hadith has in history. Her sun hit them so much that their faces would peel from the sun. The family of Imam Hussein, the daughters of Imam Hussein, the wife of Imam Hussein, Lady Zainab alayhi salam. Another comparison of Imam Hadi alayhi salam to Imam Hussein is this. Is that Imam Hadi alayhi salam when invited by Mutawakkil and he talked about sin and Ayatollah Safi saying, I wish I died when I see sin. That he was entered upon a majlis of khamr and drinking. That Mutawakkil was drinking, was drunk. And he invited the Imam and said to him, why don't you drink? Why don't you drink alcohol to the infallible Imam, the Khalifa of the Muslims? Imam Hadi alayhi salam replied that our meat and our flesh is not is separated from alcohol. Why don't you recite to me poetry? And he recited poetry that shook Mutawakkil up about how kings that live in their palaces soon worms will be eating their bodies. And Mutawakkil started crying and. Uh, respected Imam Hadi and had him taken to his home. This comparison was the same to Imam Hussein and the head of Imam Hussein the Shah. That when he came and his caravan came to the palace of Yazid, the hadith says he was drinking fuqa. Fuqa is beer. They were drinking beer and Yazid Mal'un was pouring the beer on the head of Imam Hussein. Yazid Mal'un was playing with the lips of Imam Hussein with the stick and Imam Hussein, the caravan of Imam Hussein, what did the Ahl al-Bayt have to do with alcohol? What does Lady Zainab and the children of Imam Hussein have to do with alcohol? And watch Yazid drink alcohol and abuse the head of Imam Hussein. So Imam Hadi was martyred, given a poison. You know, when you're given poison in the, some of the maqtal mentions, when a person is given this type of poison at such a young age, they begin to twist and twirl as if a snake has bit them. As if it's venom, it's poison. And they twist and twirl. And they become thirsty. There it is that Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salam comes. They say he opened up his collar. Ya sahib al-zaman, we give you our condolences. This is your grandfather. This is your father. Inshallah, give us blessings, Imam Salam that he opened up his collar and that he gave a funeral happened to Imam Hadi, a vast funeral happened. Many people came, he was buried in his own house. Many people came because the Abbasis, they want to say we respected him. We respected him. But what about the funeral of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? What type of funeral did he have? It's mentioned in Ziyar Nahia for three days and three nights. That Ahl al Qura came, Assalamu ala man dafanahu Ahl al Qura. We say salam to Imam Hussein that the people, the Bedouins, the people that were living there, they came and buried Imam Hussein after three days and three nights. The official burial, of course, was with, with the Imam Sajjad alayhi salam. Sallallahu alayhi ya Aba Abdullah. Sallallahu alayhi ya Aba Abdullah. Sallallahu alayhi ya Aba Abdullah. Ya Allah, we ask you because of Imam Hadi alayhi salam, his name, give us guidance, inshallah. Give us the love of Imam Ali alayhi salam, Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Allow us to be of the Rajabiyun, to fast and worship, inshallah, in this month, and to benefit from the river of Rajab, which is wider than milk and sweeter than honey in the day of judgment, inshallah. Ya Allah, we mentioned the name of the grandfather and the father of Imam Mahdi expedite his return. Allow us to see him and to serve him, inshallah. Ya Allah, have mercy upon all of those that has passed away, especially Ayatollah Safi Gulbarghani and the son of our brother, uh, Fayyad. May Allah bless the soul of his son. May Allah, inshallah, forgive all your sins and this recite salat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad wa